Welcome students. So, as I told you in my previous lecture that uh, we have completed the process of learning about preparing the financial statements. So, that is over, we have learned about the preparation of the trading and profit and loss account and uh, balance sheet of the different forms of organizations. If you recall sometimes back I told you that earlier there were the two financial statements which were required for the company form of organizations, especially the public limited companies like Sanjay Industries and uh, uh, Mamta Fashions Limited's case we have discussed. So, only two statements were uh, required that is the income statement, that is the income statement and balance sheet, income statement and balance sheet they were required to be prepared. But from 97 onwards, 1997 onwards, third statement has also become mandatory statement that is the cash flow statement, cash flow statement, cash flow statement. So, so far while preparing or learning about to prepare the financial statements, we have learned how to prepare the income statement that is trading and profit and loss account. We have learned about how to prepare the balance sheet, but we have not learned so far how to prepare the cash flow statement. So, when we talk about the cash flow statement, rather than talking it as a financial statement, is more interesting and better to learn it under the financial statement analysis. Because cash flow statement does not come from the primary information. Primary information means uh, that information which comes from the journal and ledger. Whatever the transactions business do or businesses do, they are first recorded in the journal we have seen, then they are posted in the ledger. And from the ledger it goes to trial balance and from trial balance we prepare the profit and loss account that is income statement and then the balance sheet. And when this statement we talk about cash flow statement, this statement is prepared from this and this statement, income statement and balance sheet, cash flow statement. So, we have learned the two primary statements that is income statement and balance sheet which is to be prepared from the primary records of the forms. And as far as this third statement is concerned, it is better to learn under the financial analysis, financial statement analysis rather than uh, learning it along with the income statement and balance sheet. So, now I have started discussing the financial statement analysis part, where we will be discussing and talking about the different techniques of the financial analysis and then we will talk here about the cash flow statement also. So, the first technique which I am going to talk to you is in this lecture as well as we will be continuing for the future part also that is the ratio analysis, that is the ratio analysis, financial statement analysis with the help of ratios, financial statement analysis with the help of ratios that is the ratio analysis. It is very important tool, it is very important technique and if we do, if we learn how to do a proper analysis with the help of ratios, in the normal circumstances no other kind of the analysis is required. Ratios is such a strengthful and powerful tool that if we know how to select the ratios which are useful for that particular purpose for which we are analyzing the financial statements of a company and if we are able to calculate those ratios from the information which is available in the profit and loss account and the balance sheet, then we do not need to have any other tool for the further financial analysis. We can understand about what is the overall financial position of that company. So, it is a very powerful tool, it has very important objectives, it is really very uh, rational objective is uh, this analysis and very interesting also. Now, the question arises 
how many ratios are there in literature and which out of the total ratios available are important for us. If I tell you, you would be say, it would be really strange for you to know that we have 365 ratios in the literature, 365 ratios in the literature. But all are not important in all the circumstances for all the forms and all kind of analysis. Is the understanding of the analyst, is the understanding of the financial manager that which ratios he want to use, which ratios are important for him that depends upon what is the objective in his mind, what for the financial analysis is going to be done. Is somebody going to be a potential or the new shareholder of the company, so he wants to buy the shares of that company, so for that reason he want to make the analysis or is somebody or maybe it is a financial institution who is going to lend a large amount of resources funds to the firm, so they want to know about the overall performance of the company before lending any money to the firm or is it a group of suppliers who want to have a long term relations with the firm, who want to supply the firm material long term, raw material and the other kind of material on the long term basis. So, is that the objective? What is the objective? Or if I am going to be the employee of the firm or if I am the present employee of the firm and if I am going to negotiate with the firm about the enhancement of my salaries, perks, wages, bonus or other kind of financial incentives, then I should and I have to talk to the management, then I should do the analysis prior to talking and indulging into any kind of discussion so that I have the logical uh, figures with me, logical arguments I can make out based upon the financial analysis that I have done. So, depending upon the objectives, if I am a shareholder present or I am going to be the potential shareholder or the future shareholder of the company, ratios are different. If I am the banker or any other financial institution, my objective is different, so my ratios are also different. Focus on which the, means the, the focus, the ratios on which I should have the focus, they are different. If I am going to the supplier of the company, the focus is different. And if I am going to be, if I am the present employee of the company or if I am going to be the potential employee of the company, my focus is different. So, depending upon the objective you want to do the financial analysis with, different ratios are there and we should make proper use of that. Now, means that is the, that is the intelligence of the analyst, what is the objective and what are the ratios available for that, he should be able to identify those ratios. Now, when we talk about the ratio analysis, why do we do the ratio analysis? Here is a question mark. Why do we do the ratio analysis? This is the question mark here, why? And I have given the four reasons. Number one, to draw meaningful inferences, two, to have a valuable insight into the firm's performance, three, to have inter-firm comparisons and four, to facilitate the decision making by different stakeholders. Now, to draw the meaningful inferences, what does it mean? Meaningful inferences, we want to know about the profitability of the firm. So, we want to draw the conclusion about that or <coughs> I am going to be the future lender for the company. So, I want to draw some conclusions about the safety and security of my funds if I lend the funds to this company. So, different inferences can be drawn by selecting required and certain type of the ratios and these ratios can help to understand the overall financial performance of the company in a much better way. Then to have valuable insights into the firm's performance, valuable insight about the firm's performance which a layman cannot understand, 
but a financial analyst can understand. Layman cannot understand. If he looks at the balance sheet, he won't be able to understand what this is all about. Till this point, you you go through this course and you have uh, you, you have learned something. I think you also won't be able to understand if you look at the balance sheet that uh, what is this balance sheet all uh, containing about. Then third objective is to have inter-form comparisons. One firm is doing better as compared to the other or the vice versa. How you are going to conclude? Inter-form comparisons, how are you going to conclude? Performance of the firm, ranking of the firm. For example, there are 10 firms in the industry. Now, in the 10 firms, you have to rank on the basis of the financial performance that this is number one, firm number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or maybe 2 firms are the same level, 3 are same level, 4 are same level. How you are going to say about that? And if one is doing better, others is not doing. So, if other want to also start doing better, they have to look at the first one and they have to analyze the performance of the first one if how what are they doing so that we if we do the same thing we will also be reaching up to their level or sometime we can cross their position or their level also. So, interform comparisons are also possible with the help of ratio analysis and then the fourth point is to facilitate the decision making by the different stakeholders. Should I if I am going to be a supplier or if I am the present supplier should I continue supplying to this firm? I am the employee, should I continue working with this firm? I am the financial institution, I have already lent the funds to this firm and the firm is asking for additional funds. Should I lend them some more funds? And if I am the existing shareholder, should I continue as a shareholder of this company or I should sell off the shares of this company in the market and then become the former shareholder because this company's performance is going to go down in the years to come and I, my share price will also go down. So, I have to be very, very careful. So, these are the four important reasons that why the financial statement analysis is important. Now, what facilitates the financial statement analysis? You have here sources of miss when we talk about the financial statement analysis and using the ratio analysis as the one important tool of the financial analysis. Then these miss all these sources which are in the liability side of the balance sheet, share capital, reserves and surpluses, debentures, long term loans, short term loans and current liabilities are of great importance to us. We should be careful about that, means we should be knowing about it. And if we have the complete knowledge of these different sources of the firm, then yes, it is going to be very useful information for our financial statement analysis through ratios. Similarly, when we talk about the uses of funds, we have application side, we have two kind of assets, fixed assets and current assets. So, how much funds are invested into the fixed assets? How much funds are invested in the current assets? how the company is managing the total sources given in the liability side and what is the state of affairs of the asset side. This is again a very important meaningful information for us. And when we talk about that yes, now we are sure, we are convinced that ratio analysis is a very important tool. If we have the right kind of information available in the balance sheet in the profit and loss account, we can calculate different type of the ratios and they can help us to draw very meaningful and valuable conclusions and we do not need to think about any other financial analysis. This is the strength of the ratio analysis. Once it is clear to all of us that yes, the ratio analysis is a very useful tool, I would like to be an expert in the ratio analysis, then yes, we will have to proceed further. and we will have to know about that what are the different ratios which are generally calculated. All 365 ratios are not of use to one single uh, say a stakeholder or one single purpose. Different purposes, different ratios, different stakeholders, different ratios. But largely for a general analysis of the overall operating and financial performance of a company or any business organization, these are some ratios if you say these are the seven categories of the ratios which can be 
calculated. These are the seven broad categories, these are the seven broad heads and different ratios are tied together, clubbed together. Similar categories of ratios are clubbed together and they are given one single name. And we can calculate these seven categories of the ratios. One category involves more than say 2, 3, 4 ratios and then when we have the total ratios information under these 7 categories with regard to a company, we can understand what is the overall position of the company, how the company is doing, how the company is performing. Now, first set of the ratios is ROI ratios, they are return on investment ratios or we call them ROI ratios. By calculating these ratios in different way, different style, different manner, we come to know about the profitability position of the firm or return on investment position of the firm. It is a broader term, it is not profitability. Profitability is a very narrow term. Return on investment as a whole is the bigger term. ROI is a bigger term, is a broader term and by calculating different ratios under the ROI, we can get to know that whatever the total investment is made in the company from different sources, borrowed and owned sources, share capital and the loans, what is the return on those sources? That is, we are going to talk about, discuss, identify the ratios under ROI category and we are going to calculate about three ratios which will facilitate the return on investment process or the level of return on investment. Then is the solvency ratios. Solvency ratios, solvency ratios, under solvency ratios we calculate different set of ratios which solvency means strength of the firm. How strengthful the firm is? How strengthful the firm is? How, how means financially how powerful the firm is? On the one side we have liabilities means sources, other side we have the assets. So, what is the level of assets the firm has and what is the value of those assets? So, it means solvency if you understand financial strength of the company, overall how powerful the company is, how strengthful the company is. It may be possible that ROI of the firm is low currently, but the solvency is very, very high. So, today they are not doing very well, but tomorrow in the time to come they will improve the performance. So, some idea we can draw, some conclusion, some clues we can draw from the solvency ratios. Then we have liquidity ratios. Liquidity ratios means talking about the liquidity position of the firm. Liquidity means availability of the liquid funds. Liquid funds means which can be used to make the short term payments, short term payments. We have prepared the balance sheet, so we have kept top is the share capital on the liability side, top is the share capital, then is the long term loans. And then we come to the lower part, there is the current liabilities and provisions and on the asset side we take long term assets, then we come to the current assets. So, when we talk about the liquidity ratios, we calculate these ratios from the lower part of the balance sheet by taking the information from current assets and current liabilities. So, how much current liabilities are there in the firm? If all the liabilities become due to be paid on the same date, how much current assets firm has? So, we have different means ratios under the liquidity category. Liquidity means you might have huge, so say for example somebody has the huge land or a big house, but he has no cash in the pocket. If he goes to the market, if you want to buy the foodstuffs for him, if you want to buy some uh, say clothes for him, if you want to buy some uh, other kind of the necessities for him, he may be a big landlord, but if he does not have that cash available out of that property is what is the use of those fixed assets with him? What is the use of that huge land? What is the use of that big building? Similar is the case with a company. So, companies having huge 
fixed assets, but the current assets are not available. If the liquid cash is not available, in that case they cannot make the payment. So, we should have the liquidity, liquid cash available, liquid funds available and by cal calculating certain number of ratios, we get to know about the liquidity position of the firm. Then the fourth category are the turnover issues. Turnover issues are talking about the operating performance of the firm. How quickly we are converting raw material into finished product and finished product into sales. So, it means turnover is talking about the efficiency of the use of fixed assets with which what efficiency we are using the fixed assets with what efficiency we are using the resources. So, you can calculate the turnover ratios from the liability side also, you can calculate the turnover ratios from the asset sides, turnover of the assets, how many times the sales are as compared to the fixed assets the firm has. So, larger the amount of the sales, larger the means uh, say uh, higher is the turnover of the firm. How many sales, how much sales are there as compared to the total funds invested as being shown by the liability side. Turnover is the efficacy, the efficiency of the firm by converting means maximum ensuring the maximum use of the assets and making maximum amount of the sales. Then we talk about the profitability ratios. They are related to ROI ratios, but the profitability is a narrow term. Profitability is a narrow term where we talk about the gross profit or net profit or some expenses which increase or decrease the profit, some exp expenses and incomes which increase or decrease the profits, but ROI is a in a different sense, it is a broader in the broader sense we calculate the ROI, but if we want to know the quick profitability of the firm, then we calculate the profitability ratios. Then is the DuPont analysis. DuPont is a company you must have heard about which is into different fields, they are into agriculture, they are into chemicals, they are into uh, consultancy, they are into so many areas, it is a US firm. So, they have also developed some ratios, certain ratios and not more ratios, but just, just means uh, uh, 3, 4 ratios they have given and they are of the view that if somebody is able to calculate these 3, 4 ratios efficiently no need to calculate any other ratios, you can have a very good idea about what the firm is all about, how the firm is going to perform, how the firm is going to behave in future and what is the future of the firm, what is the potential of the firm. And then lastly we talk about the valuation or the capital market ratios. In the capital market ratios we talk about what is the market value of the firm. There are the two values of the firm, you must have heard about two values of the firm. One is book value which is shown by the balance sheet because land we purchased long time back for 20,000, today that land for 20 lakhs but we keep on showing it at 20,000. Plant and machinery is we have bought for 10 lakhs, today it is of 50 lakhs but we are showing in the balance sheet for 10 lakhs minus depreciation. So, we prepare the financial statement on the historical basis and following the book value. Whereas, there is a different value which is called as a market value, capital market value. Say for example, now one company issues the shares, 10 rupees share, the company has issued long back. That share today is trading for 2000 rupees in the market. In the company's books of accounts is only for 10 rupees, but the market value of that share is 2000 rupees. So, that is the perceptional value that is the perceptional value, what is the perception of the people about a one particular company? That is the perceptional value. So, and by making the valuation or the by calculating the valuation or the capital market ratios, we know about that what is the capital market position of the firm and if you compare it with the book value, how much difference exists between the book value and the market value of the firm? Higher the difference you can say that a firm of 10 rupees has the market value of 2000 rupees. It means they are doing very well, their value in the uh, perception, people's uh, perceptions about that firm is very, very good and 
that firm will never find a problem selling their stocks in the market any number of issues of the stocks they come out people will be all out to buy the stocks. Then next thing we want to learn is interpretation of ratios. One thing is that we calculate those figures those values we have calculated. We have calculated for example, one liquidity ratio is say current ratio and that current assets are 100 and current liabilities are 50. So, the ratio is 2 is to 1, Okay, we have calculated. But what is the meaning of this figure 2 is to 1? We should have some basis for interpreting the, those figures and we have some basis for the interpretation of those figures. One basis is we follow the standard rule of thumbs. There are standard rule of thumbs given in the literature that this ratio to be considered as acceptable has to be minimum this much or maximum this much. For example, for the current ratio we have a standard rule of thumb is that it should not be more than or it should not be less than 1.33 is to 1. This is the standard rule of thumb. So, interpretation is either on the basis of the standard rule of thumb or cross sectional analysis. You calculate the ratios of one company in which you are interested and then you calculate the ratios of the other two companies who are the leaders in the market. One is a leader in the market, one is a laggard in the market and then you compare the ratios of the three companies and then you try to find out how behind this company is from the leader and how ahead this company is of the laggard in the market and what is the scope of the further growth. So, comparison or then we have the already calculated ratios about the industry average. Industry ratios are also available. So, we can compare the ratios of one particular firm with the industry performance and then we can rate this firm where it lies as compared to the industry performance whether it is above the industry average, below the industry average and where it lies as compared to the leader in the market or the laggard in the market you can easily draw a conclusion about the performance of the company. Then we talk about the other way is the time series analysis time series analysis that about this one company only you calculate the ratios for say 2016, 2017 or 2015 or 2014 and or maybe 2013 also, 2012 also. For by calculating the ratios for the past 5 years, 6 years or 10 years, you can get to know how the line goes, whether the ratio is stable is going up or going down. You can easily find out that how the company is performing how the company is doing and what is expected, what has happened in the past 10 years and what is expected to happen in the next 5 years or 10 years. You can make an intra firm comparison that is a on the basis of the time series data or on the basis of the time series performance. Now, there the next part is the relevance of the ratios. What is the relevance of the ratios to the different stakeholders? When we talk about the relevance of the, the ratios to the different stakeholders as I have already to, told you in the beginning of discussion that ratios importance is also for the short term creditors who are suppliers on the basis of ratios they can say whether I should supply to this firm or not. Then long term creditors financial institutions I told you already that we should means their, their objectives different so their ratios are also different for management to know their performance themselves, they can calculate the ratios. Investors present as well as the potential investors with the help of ratios they can decide whether to continue as the shareholder of this company or sell off the shares in the market and if somebody want to buy the shares of this company they can easily make out that whether to buy the share or not. And then the government, many times government agencies keep on calculating these ratios and on the basis of that they keep on knowing about the performance of the firms and maybe the sometime regulators also, sometime the other government agencies they can miss these ratios are equally important for the government also. And last thing we are going to talk about is importance of ratios. So, importance of ratio is also to the different stakeholders like promoters they also want to who are the initial 7 shareholders they are they are also interested in the company's performance then the general shareholders who are existing shareholders, they also want to know about the performance of the company. So, they can know it at with the help of ratios. Prospective investors as I told you, they want to invest into the shares of the company. So, they can get to know with the help of ratios. Lenders, creditors, customers, employees, 
government and regulatory bodies, management, research and analysis agencies. Many agencies like you have heard about uh, Moody's or uh, Standard and Poor, these are the international rating agencies. Then we have Indian rating agencies means uh, who are working in India, Crystal, Care, Ikra, they are Fitch. So, there are some other rating agencies who are working with a focus on the Indian, Indian market. They rate the companies and their performance from time to time and they do largely with the help of ratios. And public at large, anybody in the general public can be interested to know about the performance of the company and ratio analysis can be the best and the easiest and tool with the simple understanding. Very clear and very simple tool to understand the overall performance of the company. So, this is just the theoretical foundation of the first technique of the financial analysis that ratio analysis and from my next lecture onwards, we will start learning about first how to calculate these ratios, we will know about the different formulas and different uh, means the meanings of those ratios and then we will discuss a case where we will calculate the ratios of that particular company, it will be a existing company and we will calculate those ratios about that company and we will analyze that performance of the company and draw the meaningful uh, conclusions about the performance of that company. So, this all I will be discussing and talking about in my next lecture. Thank you very much. <laughs>